Hello and welcome everyone to Varsity Tutors Virtual Summer Camp. I'm Brian and I am thrilled. I follow two people on TikTok and the most famous one is, uh, is Evan the Magician here. You guys know from magic that most magicians make their living by making things disappear. Evan's kind of the opposite. Out of almost nowhere, he made 15 million TikTok followers and plenty of millions more on Instagram and YouTube appear with his magic tutorials, which we're going to show you a lot of today. You're going to learn how to do magic and that there's still some magic to it, but there's a lot of discipline and technique. And Evan's going to show you all of that. Now, one magical thing about these classes is that they're interactive. So if you look at the chat panel next to us, Evan's going to ask you some questions about what you know about magic, and he wants to hear from you. You can type in a question, and just like magic, it'll come to me, and I'll do some moderated Q&A at the end. So if you've got any questions for Evan about your favorite tricks or uh, how he's doing things, type those in the chat there. Put your name on it, and we'll be able to know who's asking. And in about a half an hour from now, we're going to do some, uh, some questions and answers, and so ask him anything. Um, also in about a half an hour, we're going to have an opportunity to take a picture with Evan. You'll get your selfie with your favorite magician, or at least my favorite magician, and an opportunity to win. Um, so if you uh, have a phone nearby with a camera, get a camera. If you upload it to Instagram, tag Varsity Tutors and tag the card guy. That's Evan's handle. We'll put that up. Uh, you'll be entered to win a, a deck of magic cards or a magical deck of cards. And if you've ever seen his Sharpie video, uh, you'll get that exact Sharpie as well, and he'll sign those cards with it. So look forward to that. All right. With all that said, I want to turn it over to Evan. First, I want to thank him for making this one of those magic acts where the assistant doesn't get cut in half. Uh, but we're going to learn a lot of exciting tricks. Evan, uh, take it away and abracadabra. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Hi, guys. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm Evan, the card guy. I started doing magic when I was 12. I'm 21 now. It's actually funny how I started. I got grounded from video games. Um, I was really bored. I was looking for something to do because like video games was basically all I did. Um, so I was looking for something to do and I'm like, I'm going to look through drawers, maybe find something to play with, something to do. And I found a deck of cards. So I'm like, wait, what if I learn a couple magic tricks? Um, I learned a couple and obviously the rest is history. Nine years later, I started posting some videos or I guess eight years later, because right now it's nine years since I started. So like a year and a half ago, I'm like, let me make some videos. I've been practicing magic forever. Um, I had joined the magic castle, which is like a really cool exclusive magic club when I was younger. I'm like, now let's try to take it to the screen. Let's take it to social media and not necessarily overnight, but after a, the first few weeks, it started really taking off and I've enjoyed it ever since. And if you're one of my followers, welcome. If you're not, I'm Evan, the card guy. Um, I'm going to be going over a few things with you guys today. Um, I'm going to go over the fundamental notes of magic. I'm also going to be going over working on your sleight of hand, how to practice, how to get better. And then I'm going to go into something really cool and something that a lot of magicians don't talk about. It's how to fool your audience, how to use misdirection and psychology to really make it convincing. And then at the end, we'll have some photos that you can tag me in and all that stuff. I'll interact with some of them on Instagram and uh, yeah, and then a q and I want to start this off with a question. What is your guys' favorite magic trick you've seen? I'll wait for your answers in the chat. Type in some answers. What is your favorite magic trick? Um, and after, I'm going to show you my favorite magic trick, or at least my favorite trick with cards, because it's super cool and you can do it anywhere. So I'm seeing some stuff. Um, sawing a lady in half. That's a, that's a classic trick right there. Um, David Blaine fans, that's awesome. I am actually a huge David, Bl David Blaine. David Blaine fan. I can't even talk today. Um, but he's awesome. I actually saw a specific trick of him like making a frog appear out of nowhere. It was crazy. He like showed his mouth empty, took a cup, spit the frog into the cup. I don't even know how he did it. That's just, that's insane. Um, I'm also seeing some card trick fans, some optical illusion fans. Um, I started doing that on TikTok. It looks like we got a bunch of my followers here. So that is so cool. Thank you guys for being here. Let me show you my favorite trick right now. It's really cool. If you've been a fan of mine for a little while, you know this trick, or at least you've seen it. Um, I'm going to teach it at the very end. So remember this card, it's actually okay if I see it in the reflection, three of diamonds, right? I'm gonna leave that card in the deck. I'm gonna do something pretty weird. I'm gonna take some cards face up, some face down, some face up, some face down, basically just making a huge mess. So now not only do I have to find the card, but I have to find it in all this, but check this out. If I just snap, now all the cards are actually the same exact direction, except for the three of diamonds. So yeah, that is one of my favorite tricks. And let me teach you some basics in magic right now. 
The first thing I want to go over with you guys is how to know the card they picked. That's like the most fundamental thing. If you don't know the card they picked, you can't really do anything because you have no idea what to do next, right? You're kind of lost. I'm going to show you a few ways. The first thing I'm going to show you is a card force, which is basically how to make someone pick a certain card. It sounds kind of crazy. And some of you might not even know that that exists, but there's ways that magicians can make you pick a certain card when it seems like a free choice. So obviously you're not physically here to tell me when to stop. But if you were here, I would say, tell me when to stop as I go through the cards and it would be whatever card I want. In this case, the three of diamonds. So this is really cool. If you have a deck of cards, grab it. You can practice. If not, it's pretty easy to remember. This is the concept behind it. I have my card that I want to force and it could be any card. It doesn't matter what the card is. Um, let's take the eight of hearts because why not? I'm actually one off from my favorite card. My favorite card is the nine of hearts. Um, but you put that card on top. So you have the card you want to force on the top of the deck. In this case, eight of hearts. Then you're going to cut the deck in half and then get what's called a pinky break, which means you're separating the two halves with your pinky. So what's happening here is you have half the deck and then your pinky separating it right at your card you're going to force, right? And then what you do is you go through like a flip book with your thumb and wherever they say stop, it doesn't even matter. You just pick up on that pinky break and it's going to be the card that you wanted all along. And you're probably like, okay, but won't they notice? The cool thing about this is you can only really see the break from your perspective, the magician's angle from the front, you can't see it. And maybe people can see it from this side, but what you do is you use your other hand to kind of guard that so that it's invisible from all angles. And then you go through, like I said, with my thumb, and then wherever they say stop, you just pick up like this and show them the card. So that is how to know a card. I'm actually gonna show you one more way because that is a card force. But what if you genuinely don't know the card? This is super convincing. What if you didn't force it? You gave a completely free selection. In fact, sometimes I let them physically choose which one they want. Like I let them look at the faces so they can choose because it's super powerful. In case people might have knowledge about magic, they might know what a card force is. Having someone actually pick a card could fool magicians because they're like, wait, you're actually giving me a free choice because there's no way you can influence if you're actually able to choose, right? So they choose, and I have no idea what this is. For the sake of teaching you, I know it's the Ace of Diamonds, but typically I wouldn't know. So here's what you do. This concept is called a key card. So I just showed you how to force a card. This is, if you don't know the card, this is a key card. So as they're looking at this card, as they're remembering, they're showing their friends, you're gonna remember the bottom card, and this card is gonna be the key. So in this case, the 10 of Diamonds, you're just gonna look kind of as they're distracted, look at the card and then cut the deck like we did before and ask them to place the card here. So they're placing the card on the original top of the deck, right? Because you cut the deck and they put it right here. When they put the card there, remember, I don't know what this is. And then I remember 10 of, I remember 10 of diamonds, right? So I put my key card on top of theirs. So what just happened is even though I don't know their card in a real life situation, I remembered 10 of diamonds. So now all I have to do is look for the 10 of diamonds because whatever card is above it will be theirs. So let me go over it just one last time. I remember the bottom card. You can do it before even, but if you forget to, as they're showing the card, as they're remembering, just take a peek, put the card in the middle, make sure your key card goes on top. Just look for your key card and whatever's above it will be their card. So that was how to know their card. Now, once you know their card, you gotta find it. You gotta make it cool. It's not really cool if you just kind of go through and be like, oh, there it is, there's your card. It's kind of anticlimactic, right? It's like if you're watching a movie, you don't want it to get to the end right away. You want to see the whole journey, right? So let's say I remembered my key card and I know their card is this one, the Ace of Diamonds. I'm not going to show that I know it right away. Typically what I'll do is I'll move it to the top of the deck. And that's as simple as just moving it to the top of the deck. You just cut the deck at that card. So now their card's on top. It's very important to know where someone's card is at all times because um, it makes things easier. Because once the card is on top, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can palm the card, which is a little advanced. Um, I might not go, to, go over that today. It's a little too complicated to teach in this time period, but I have a tutorial on my YouTube for that. Um, but what you can do is you can palm the card and like hide it in your pocket. Um, but what I like to do in a simple and very powerful effect is a mind reading thing. So I know the card is Ace of Diamonds. I already found it with my key card. So I know it's Ace of Diamonds. So I like to do kind of a mind reading thing. I'll put the deck down and I'll say, look into my eyes, think of the color of your card. I'm going to guess it was, no, red. And then you kind of just milk it. It's all performance. You already know the card. You knew it the second you found it next to your key card. And then you say, okay, let me guess the suit, diamonds, et cetera, et cetera. You can just make it super cool. 
Um, but yeah, that's how you reveal a card. Be creative with it. You can do whatever you want once you know the card. You can even do something as simple as once you read their mind, be like, you know what? And now if I snap, it teleports to the top. Because for all they know, the card was in the middle, right? Because you had put it in the middle. And even though you had moved it to the top, they don't know what you were doing. For all they know, you were just shuffling the cards. Um, so that was how to know their card and how to reveal their card. Um, I'm going to show you how to change a card. This is super powerful. People always ask me, how do you change a card? And this is super cool because you pretend that you got it wrong. So let's say I got the card to the top of the deck. Let's use the same example, Ace of Diamonds. So I already forced it or I used a key card to find out what it is. Now it's on top of the deck. What I'm going to do is an awesome move in magic called the double lift. Now it's simple and considered a beginner move, but it's not super easy to make it look perfect. It's just going to take a lot of practice. A double lift is just making two cards look like one. So it's making two look like one. So I really have two cards here because their card was on top and I lifted two, right? And that's just going to take practice. But what you're going to do is kind of like we had a pinky break at the beginning to force a card. You're going to have a pinky break under the top two cards and that'll allow you to lift them together, right? So you have two cards, you flip them over however you want and you show, oh, this wasn't your card here, hold on to it. But now you're handing them their card, right? Because if you just turned over two cards and their card is technically on top, but they think this is one, they're gonna think the card just changed. So you hand them that, keep it face down to make it more magical. They shake it or whatever, and then it changes to their card and they'll be freaking out. Another cool thing you can do is you can actually reveal that it's on top. Be like, look, if I snap, it goes to the top and then you can act like you're putting it in the middle. So what I like to do here is this really cool move. Let me show you what it looks like first. It looks like I'm putting the card in the middle, but I'm actually not slow motion. What I'm doing is I'm taking this card with my middle finger of my other hand and I'm sliding it. But when it's fast, it kind of looks like you're taking the top card. Okay. Especially if you're not really paying attention. So you say, I'm going to find your card. If I snap, it comes to the top and you know what? We'll leave it in the middle and look, now you snap and now they snap and it looks like it came back to the top. So that's some ways how to find a card or how to know it, how to find it and how to change it. So that is that section of kind of magic 101, some basics for you. And now we have a little summary here for you guys. And here's a question. All right, here is a question for you guys. The question is, are you ready to be a magician now? Are you ready to be a magician now? Put your letter A, yes, Evan, you've ticked your last talk. B, no, I don't think my hands move quickly enough. C, no, I don't think I could ever do that consistently enough. Or D, no, I don't think my fingers bend that way. I see all kinds of answers in the chat. Um, what's cool is, you know, there's some people that are maybe really confident, which is awesome. It's awesome that you're super confident with me. I got to be honest. I would have answered C or D when I was first starting off. I honestly thought that it wasn't meant for me when I was first starting magic. I, I wanted to do the tricks and I practiced on my little sister, which is probably like the worst person to practice on. She's like, I saw what you did. You're bad. You stink. Um, but I kept practicing and eventually I got better and better. So if it's kind of hard for you right now, or if it feels awkward, it should feel awkward. It's kind of like if you're first learning how to drive or how to shoot a basketball or how to swing a baseball bat, like it's not going to be perfect the first time. So if you answered one of those um, later answers and it doesn't seem like you have it yet, don't worry. Just keep practicing. You will get it. That's actually a big tip. Make sure to practice before you show people. If not, there won't be really a magic element. They'll kind of see what you did. So practice in front of a mirror, practice in front of a camera, and uh, yeah, all right, the next thing I wanna go into is how to practice though. For those of you who maybe don't feel um, super confident yet, and this stuff is called cardistry. It's kind of a fancy name for like cool shuffles. Um, I'm gonna show you how to shuffle cards. I'm gonna show you how to shuffle like a pro. I'm also gonna show you the one-handed cut. This is called the Charlier cut. This is super cool. People will be super impressed when you can shuffle with one hand. And lastly, I'm gonna teach you, everyone always wants to learn this one, the card spring. This one is going to take time, okay? So don't expect to get this right away, um, but with some practice, you'll get it. So first, let's start off with how to shuffle. I'm going to show you two ways. The first one is an overhand shuffle. Some of you may already do it. It just looks like this. You put the deck sideways, put your thumb on one side, and then your middle and ring on the other, like this. And this would be in your dominant hand. So whatever hand you write with, that's where you hold the cards. Now, you're going to come over with your other hand and use your thumb and fingers to kind of just take some cards like this. And it's pretty simple. You just kind of repeat up and down motion with this hand. And with this hand, you just strip some cards one at a time, which is really cool. And this one just kind of, I like that it kind of looks messy. That's kind of the point. Um, it just looks very natural. It's how a lot of people shuffle, even if they're not a magician. 
Now, I wanna teach you the riffle shuffle, which is probably what you think of when you hear the word shuffle. Um, and a lot of people might be able to do this. A lot of you guys may be able to do that part, but maybe not the bridge. I'm gonna show you how to do the bridge. And again, guys, anything I teach you right now, if you don't get it right away, don't worry. It took me forever, um, especially because when I started, I was 12, so my hands were a little smaller. Um, so it was kind of hard to maneuver the cards, but with some practice, like I got these things in a few months or sometimes a few weeks, it kind of depends on the move, depends on the person. Um, but I'm going to show you how to shuffle. What you're going to do is you're going to hold the deck in what's called Biddle Grip, B-I-D-D-L-E, Biddle Grip, which is basically your thumb in the back, and then your pointer finger is curled on top, and then the rest of your fingers are in the front. So this is what it looks like. And then kind of like you're flipping through a flip book, you know those little like animation flip books where you flip through and it looks like a stick figure is like moving? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Comment yes if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you have it like this, and then with your thumb, you're gonna flip through like a flip book. But first you're gonna turn it sideways and then flip through like this onto your other hand. You're gonna go half the deck. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your other hand to mirror the same exact image, right? So this is the same thing. You're holding both sides the exact same. And now that flip book action you did at the beginning, you do the same thing with both hands and the cards will overlap, right? So they'll go like this. And it'll just take some practice. Now, a lot of you right now, probably think you need a table. A lot of people always tell me when I teach them how to shuffle, they're like, okay, but I don't, I don't have a table. How am I gonna do that? I need a table or else the cards are gonna fall. What's interesting is if you hold the cards correctly in the grip that I just showed you, the cards will naturally have a table because of these fingers, your middle ring and pinky. Because as you do it, your fingers could be holding the cards in a stable position so that they don't move. Um, and that might just take some practice, I think the tip for that is kind of curl your fingers over as opposed to like having them with your fingertips because then they will fall, then they will fall. But if you curl over, then they're really stable. It's kind of like they have a table right there. So again, flip book like this, both sides do the same thing. And then to do the bridge, it's actually not as hard as it looks. You put your thumbs on the top, right in the middle where the two halves meet. And then you curl down like this. And then you release the pressure gradually and the cards will bridge. It's kind of hard to do slow motion. Um, but yeah, you go like this, like this, thumbs go on top, curl down like this, kind of make like a rainbow shape or like an upside down U, release. And that is how to shuffle a deck of cards. Next, I'm gonna teach you guys the one-handed cut. This is a little more advanced, but at the same time, I've seen some people get it like the first day and then other people like me, I got it like after maybe a few weeks. It's hard, but I'm gonna show you right now, and this one's super cool. If you can get this down, you're gonna impress your family, friends, everybody. It's just super cool, because people aren't used to seeing someone who's able to maneuver the cards with only one hand, which is really, really cool. So you're gonna hold the deck like this. This is called mechanics grip. So it's in your non-dominant hand. A lot of people think it's their dominant hand. It's actually the opposite. And the reason for that is because when you get to more advanced cardistry, um, you need the cards based in your non-dominant hand, if that makes sense. So like they're always, the, like the resting position of a deck of cards should be in your non-dominant hand um, because your other hand is gonna be doing other stuff. So you have it like this, basically your thumb is on the side, like the outside of your body, that's how I like to explain it. So if you're left-handed, it would look like this, if you're right-handed, it's like this, okay? So your thumb is on the outside of your body, your pointer finger is in front facing your audience, and then your pinky is in the back, and then your middle and ring are here. So that's what it looks like. That's kind of like the standard grip. So like if I go up to someone and I'm going to do a magic trick and I'm going to ask them to pick a card, that's how I'm holding the deck. That's how I say pick a card and I spread the cards out. Um, this is the resting position. The only thing you're going to do for the Charlie A cut or the one-handed cut to make it a little bit different is you're going to elevate the cards like this. So notice they're not making contact with my palm. They're just like this. And then I lift them up like that. And the reason you have to do this is because you're going to use your thumb to break it in half, and then this half will fall onto your palm. So let me show you again. You're like this, and then you use your thumb to break off half, and this bottom packet will be contacting kind of your palm like this. Because here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna use your pointer finger and put it on the very bottom. So you're in this position right here. You're kind of making a triangle shape. Your thumb is just that third side. From here, you're gonna extend your pointer finger up, or not really extend it, but push it upwards. And then this packet will move up. A lot of people get stuck here. They're like, oh, I can't get it to move. I can't get, because what is supposed to happen is this packet is supposed to go like this over, right? But a lot of people get stuck here. And the reason why is because they're not moving their thumb. You kind of have to move your thumb with this bottom half 
so that it clears the other packet so that it can then fall. Okay, so one more time, it's like this. Thumb splits it in half. Pointer finger goes under, go up like this. Your thumb kind of moves with that half and then goes on top like that. So that was the one-handed cut. It's also, it's also called the Charlier cut. Now I'm gonna show you the one I know you all wanna know, the card spring. The card spring is so, so cool. It looks like this. People are obsessed with the card spring. When I tell you I'll do magic for people and they literally like, I'll, I'll do this like between tricks and they're like, whoa, do that again, forget the trick. I like, do that again, that was crazy. Um, people love the card spring, it's so cool. And as you practice, you can get it like bigger and bigger, which is super cool. That was a little unrealistic. That's kind of like a cartoon. Um, I have a little cousin who just turned six at his birthday party. He's like, Evan, can you do the thing where you like go like shh with the cards, but then make them float in the middle of the air? I'm like, sorry, buddy, that's impossible. I didn't tell him that, but I thought it. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do this. What you're gonna do, start with the deck in the same mechanic script that I just taught you, and then come over with your dominant hand. So this is a perfect example of why mechanic script, it's supposed to be in your non-dominant hand. Because something like this, you need your stronger hand. You're gonna come over like this, your thumb is gonna go in the back corner, and then your other fingers go in the other corner. The only finger you don't really use for this is your pinky. Now, this is gonna take a lot of practice, but what you're gonna do is use your strength, use your finger muscles, um, bend those corners towards each other, like your, your fingers and your thumb. Bend those towards each other. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have your hand like this in the same position it was at the beginning. You're gonna keep it like that. A lot of people have their hand flat, but the problem is when you spring the cards on a flat hand, they're gonna fall back. They're just gonna slip off your hand. You have to be stable. Kind of think of this hand as a claw. What's gonna happen is it stays in the exact same position. Exact same, right? It's the same as mechanic trip. If anything, I like to emphasize it a little bit, almost like a claw, right? And then what's gonna happen, as I'm bending the corners towards each other, that's building tension in the cards. And then I'm gonna release them off my thumb like this. And you can just practice super close, just like this. It might even hurt your hands a little bit at the beginning. I remember um, a way that I would practice when I first started. Like I said, I was 12, so I, I didn't have the same hand strength. What I would do is I'd practice with like a quarter of the deck and then half the deck and then three quarters. Eventually I'd get to the whole thing. But yeah, so you have it like this, thumb goes back here, rest of your fingers on the opposite corner, bend down and they go off your thumb. They don't go off your fingers. That's a common misconception. That just doesn't look cool. It sounds kind of weirder. Um, the cards go off of your thumb, just like that into your hand. So that was the card spring. So yeah, guys, that was some uh, card drills for you, some card practice, also known as cardistry. And yeah, let's move on. All right, I'm gonna ask you guys another question here. I'll wait for the slide to come up. All right, here we go. Um, now that you know the main notes, do you think you'll ever be surprised by a card trick again? That is the question, guys. Do you think, now that you know kind of how to find a card, how to change a card, all that stuff, do you think you're like, you know what, I can never be fooled by another card trick again. Nah, this, this I'm basically a pro magician now. Do you guys think that, yes or no? <laughs> I, I know there's gonna be yeses and nos. Okay, okay, I wanna show you guys a really cool trick real quick, and then I'm gonna go into my next section. I'm gonna have to stand up for this one. This one's crazy, and actually I prefer to do magic standing up. Uh, fun little facts for you. I want you guys to look very carefully, okay? I want you to focus very carefully on the cards, on my hands, I'm gonna take this card right here. And obviously if you were in person, you could pick this card if you wanted to, but check it out. We have the three of hearts. Watch the three of hearts very, very carefully. I'm gonna take the three. I'm gonna leave it in the deck, push it all the way in. Look, if I snap, it teleports up here. Guys, let me know in the chat if that fooled you or not. Maybe we got some really smart people who are like, nah, I know what you did, but I know a bunch of you, be honest. I know you did not see that coming. And the reason why is because I used misdirection. I used some psychology. I'm gonna teach you that stuff right now. I'm gonna teach you how I did that trick. By the way, um, I'm often asked when I do this trick on camera, wait, can you actually do that in person? And uh, fun fact, it's actually like very doable in person as long as you're good at distracting people. So that's what I'm gonna talk about now. I'm gonna talk about how to distract people, how to fool your audience. Cause you could be the best technical magician in the world. like be the best at the actual techniques, um, but maybe like in an actual performance setting, your stuff doesn't work as well because they don't look where you want them to, or like you're not good at distracting. And that's fine, you build it as you build confidence. And that's actually one of my points I'm gonna talk about, but you build it as you practice. So make sure, like I said, when you learn a trick, practice by yourself first in front of a camera, a mirror, 
and then start practicing with people. But the more people you practice with, the more you'll be able to use these tips. The first tip I wanna show you is vocal intonation. Um, the way you speak is very important in magic. You have to speak like clearly, not necessarily loud or like a traditional magician, um, like, all right, I'm gonna make this. Because like a lot of magicians, nothing, nothing wrong with that, by the way, have that like mysterious aspect. I don't really feel like I speak like that. I kind of just be myself. Um, so that's the thing when you're speaking, be yourself, however you normally talk, just talk like that, you know, and just have fun doing it. Um, let me show you kind of how I did the trick as I'm explaining these tips for you. So the first one, like I said, is vocal intonation. I was very confident when I was saying, okay, remember the card, six of hearts, focus on the card. And you didn't even notice because I was so confident in what I just said, I switched the card already. It's no longer the six of hearts. It's a different card. And I'll show you how I did that right now. So remember the pinky break at the beginning, how to force a card, you have a pinky break. Here's what you do for this trick. You get a pinky break on the very bottom card of the deck. So you literally have 51 cards and then the last card right there with a the pinky break. And then I have you pick a card, right? And I'm maintaining that pinky break the whole time. I have you pick one, let's say this one, King of Hearts. And then I transition the pinky break into a thumb break, which is basically the same thing, except it's with my thumb of my other hand like this, okay? From there, I cut the deck. I show them the card one more time. I say, focus, focus on the King of Hearts. And what it looks like I'm doing is I'm just pushing up the card, right? But really what I'm doing is I'm dropping this card that I have in a thumb break on top of it as I push it up. So now it's the second card. But in the action of showing them the card, they don't see that because it looks like I just push up the card towards them and I just dropped another card right there. So then I say, focus, focus. And that's where the vocal intonation comes in. Be confident, really talk about like, okay, this is what you're gonna focus on. A general rule of magic, where you look, they'll look, right? So if I'm looking at the cards, they'll look at the cards. If I'm looking at them, they'll make eye contact with me. And you don't want that, right? At least not for this trick. Most tricks, it's the opposite. Most tricks, you want them to not focus on the cards because you're doing something sneaky. But with this trick, you want them to focus on the cards because here's what's happening. Like I said, I pushed forward this card and dropped another one. So then they think I'm putting their card in here, but really their card's right here. So I say, focus on the cards, push it in, push it in. And as they're pushing it in, I literally just put this card in my mouth. And then they're still looking at the cards because you were so confident when you said focus on the cards. So that was really cool. Um, and yeah, eye contact was my next kind of step um, aside from vocal intonation. It's kind of like what I said, people focus where you focus. So really practice the techniques, guys. Really practice the tricks because if you don't, they might not look where you want them to. Get to the point that you can do tricks. You can get your pinky break. You can do stuff without looking at the cards. It's hard at first, but you really want to get to the point that you don't have to be focusing so much on the cards um, and rather you can kind of look wherever you want them to look. So like I said, if you're trying to do something sneaky with the cards, look at them because then they'll look at you. But if you want them to focus on the cards, focus on the cards, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, last thing, just confidence. Like I said, be confident when you talk, be confident in doing it. Um, if you mess up, there's so many things you can do. Like literally what I do, if I mess up, I just go into a different trick, like literally. So hypothetically, let's say I had to pick a card, right? And I had a key card and I put it in the middle and I forgot my key card. I'm not going to be like, uh, I forgot the trick. Never mind. And like walk away. I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be like, hmm, you know what? Let's make this even harder. Pick a new card. Most magicians only have you pick one, pick a second one and forget the first one. Like literally, like just practice being random, like, and then just remember the bottom card there, right? Like just go into another trick, start over, but don't make it look like you're starting over if that makes sense. So yeah, that was the psychology behind everything. Like I said, focus on three things, your vocal intonation, focus on your eye contact, where you look, they look, and then confidence. Just be confident when you do it. And if you mess up, all right, if you mess up, it happens. I still do sometimes just go into something else. It's really not that bad. Um, just practice everything. I promised at the very beginning that I would teach you guys that first trick I showed you, my favorite trick. So I'm gonna teach you that super quick. This is actually a pretty simple trick. Um, what you're gonna do is you have them pick a card, right? So you have them pick a card, in this case, the king of clubs. Um, here's what I do. I basically just get the card to the bottom of the deck. And the way I do this is I use my ring finger and pinky to kind of just prop that card out like this. And then as I put the card back, or at least it looks like I'm putting it in the middle, I just kind of slide it on the bottom like this. All right, so once again, I have them pick a card. In this case, eight of diamonds. I do this with my ring finger and pinky. That'll just take some practice. It might feel awkward at the beginning. 
But once you get that, you just put the card on the bottom. And when you're like this, they don't notice. Like it looks like you just put the card in the middle, but it's on bottom. Now, here's what's really cool. I'm gonna go over this really quick because this is super cool. Um, you just take some cards, put them face up. Take some cards, put them face down. And it looks like they're really getting messed up, right? Your brain thinks, oh, there's gonna be some face up, some face down, some face up, some face down. Because that's what it looks like I'm doing. But if you look really carefully at what I'm doing, I'm putting some face up, adding some more, flipping it over. Adding some more, flipping it over. What's really happening here is you're splitting it in half. Half are one direction and half are the other. So let me show you again. I'll show you really slowly so it makes sense. Look, so I have the cards like this. There are cards on bottom, but they don't know that. You're taking some cards and turning them face up. And then you're taking more and turning that face up. Really, you're just adding to each half, right? So then what happens is you have half the deck one direction and half the other. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave the last card and then put it the opposite. So here's what you have. You have their card on the top and then half face up and then half face down. That's the situation you're in right now. So all you need to do is find the point that it separates, find the point that it separates these face up and these face down, and that just needs to turn over because then they'll all be the same except for their card. I'll show you one more time. It's a little confusing, uh, but you have their card on the bottom. Some go face up, some face down. Really, if you focus on what's happening, all you're doing is making it so it's half and half, right? It's just half face up, half face down. And then their card is the only one mismatched, right, on top. And the way you find it, typically there'll be a natural curve in the deck because the cards are in a different direction. So it's pretty easy to find. You just kind of look and you're just going to pick up at that point. And then when you put it back, you just kind of flip it over. So what I do in a real life situation, I say, okay, we mixed all the cards face up, face down. Now I have to find it in all this. And I just make sure that when I put it back, I put it the other way so that they're all face down except for their card. If you guys want to get some more insight on that trick, more like detailed explanation, um, you can find it on my YouTube. Just search the card guy teaching favorite card trick. I have a tutorial for it. Um, a little, a little more in depth because I want to uh, get Brian maybe back in here and we do some Q and a and uh, yeah. Perfect. Hey, like magic, I'm back, man. You uh, make me yeah. disappear. <laughs> um, hey, thank you. I, uh, if I'm a little tongue tied, right? I'm just my mind is blown. Those you showed yeah, me some of lot. those in practice, and I'm still watching them. It's it's, it's incredible. So I think the other uh, one thing I uh, I love that you mentioned is um, you know that uh, it's a good metaphor for life, right? When you make a mistake, just be confident and keep going. Yeah. And um, so I know a couple people were asking about making mistakes. We'll get to that before Q and A, and kind of a, a last call for everybody. If uh, if you've got questions for Evan, fire those over and we'll get to uh, to those but in the meantime i know everybody wants to win that uh, that magic deck of cards which i think is just a deck of cards right but you'll sign it and uh, the pen trick i think is my favorite trick um and that's on your youtube channel as well so uh, so if you guys go check that one out um you know you'll you'll see what you're winning with the pen um so it's time for everybody to take a picture with evan if you've got cameras ready um evan i'm going to turn it over to you and uh we'll go cool. about 45 seconds or so everybody gets a chance to get a picture with evan and uh and once you do if you upload it to instagram tag varsity tutors and tag at the card guy you'll be entered to win an autographed deck of cards and the trick marker that it came with so um evan yeah. take it away awesome yeah guys so if you want to take like a selfie take a picture of the screen um i'm just going to hold up random cards maybe if you see a card that uh calls out to you take a picture with that one so here's a queen. Anyone who wants to take a picture with a queen? I feel like a, I feel like a mannequin. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, so there's a queen. Let's take a next one. Here's an ace. People love the ace. Uh, actually, fun fact, if you ask someone to name a card or name their favorite, typically they say an ace or a queen. A little mind reading trick for you. Here's a 10. All right, let's get a little uh, little card fan action going. Yeah, just take pictures whenever you guys would like. Like Brian said, tag Varsity Tutors, tag me. You'll be entered to win a signed deck of cards. I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna try to do what's called an angel, where I, I stick the card to my thumb. Everyone thinks I have tape, no tape. And there's literally no way to explain that. It's just, I don't know, practice, it's weird. <laughs> All right, let's take a couple more cards. Let's do a king and a jack. All right. Let's 
Sweet. All right. You think everyone got their pictures? I think so. Yeah. And actually one question. So thanks everybody yeah. again. Yeah. I haven't covered it. Tag, uh, tag us and tag him and you'll be entered to win. And we'll do this again uh, during next week's class as well. Um, people had, I'll tell you, Evan, people had a ton of questions and actually part awesome. of the magic is you were, you know, you can talk, do magic and read at the same time. So you've actually addressed a lot of them. So I, uh, I think that was, uh, was pretty impressive. Um, one of the most, actually the most common one, as you probably saw was what with, uh, you know, a thousand question marks as people were watching the trick. So I don't know yeah, how to yeah. answer that one. Um, <laughs> another really common one dealt with, uh, with mistakes and you kind of covered that. What do you do yeah. if you make mistakes? So another follow-up to that, that a few people asked, and I really like this one is, um, do you remember a time where you made a mistake in front of an audience? Is there kind of a, a biggest mistake you've ever made and, and how'd you deal with it? Yeah. So I, like I, 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 I touched on it earlier. I did magic at the magic castle. I'm a member there. Um, I still can, I just haven't been in a little while, but, um, I started when I was 13 working there and, you know, it's like an, a private exclusive club. Brian, you were telling me that you've, you've been there. It's really cool guys comment. If you've been there really cool place in Hollywood. Um, but I was 13 when I started working there. So, you know, they present my name. They're like introducing at the time, Dr. Magic. Cause that, that was my stage name before the card guy. Fun fact for you. Um, Cause I always wanted to be a doctor growing up. Um, so I called myself Dr. Magic to combine the two. But anyways, I, I would come out, I'd do my tricks and I'm 13. So I'm getting nervous. There's a bunch of adults, um, a bunch of adults watching. And I'm like, I don't know who they are. Um, and they're here to see me. So I'm like, oh no. Um, and I remember a specific time that I messed up um, I don't know the exact trick it was, but I messed up and that was a, a, like a scripted routine. Like I'm going to go from this trick to this trick to this trick. Like it was perfectly set because, you know, we were told at the magic castle, like every performance has to be like this amount of time. So I'm like, I messed up a trick and I like, I lost their card. I didn't know what card they picked. So I did exactly what I touched on earlier. I literally just transitioned into a different trick. Um, on the inside, I'm like, Oh God, what am I going to do? But on the outside, I'm like, you know what? let's try something, you know, <laughs> um, just segue into something else. If you forget their card, if you can't find their card, try to make it seem like it's part of it. I always go to the excuse of, you know what, to make this even harder, forget that card. Let's do a new one as if somehow that's harder, um, <laughs> but they buy it. Right. Because to them, it's like, whoa, like in case he somehow knew the last one, there's no way he'll know this one. So that's my little pro tip. Just pretend like nothing's wrong and it'll be fine. Fake it till you make it, right? That's that's okay. life advice. So yep. I can't imagine being, uh, you know, thirteen. I and mean, you know, a lot of these kids, right? Yeah. Same thing. Like, you know, I would like if I if I screwed up in front of a class with a book report, I was nervous. But you know, in front of you know a yeah. big crowd, but that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. So you told us the story. Another huge question people wanted to know, right? Is Obviously now magic is a little bit easier to learn because we have Evan the card guy, right? And, you know, new, new tutorial videos seemingly every day. We've got classes yeah. like this, but when you were learning magic, eh, you're grounded from video games. There was no Evan the card guy. How did you learn? Yeah. I mean, there were some tutorials here and there on YouTube. Um, but they definitely existed. That's where I started. Um, but I feel like, I don't know, the, the way I feel like the tutorials were back then, it's they kind of lacked um, like the, the personal aspect, like the human aspect. Um, a lot of the tutorials were just like a camera on the hands, kind of, this is how you do it. Like, I feel like what I'm trying to achieve with my socials is like, I wanna teach these tricks, but I also wanna be me. I also wanna show my personality. Um, so they existed, but they weren't that fun to watch. Um, but what I did was I just learned some stuff on YouTube. Um, Although sometimes it was hard to get through some of the videos because for me, especially as a 12 year old kid, 13 year old kid, I was like, ah, oh, this is boring. Like they're just talking all monotone. This is what you're going to do next. I'm like, I can't watch this. This is boring. Um, so I started learning from books. Books is a, a really good thing. You can search um, encyclopedia of card magic. That's a good one. Um, you can literally just search like card trick books. They'll teach you like, like 80 tricks in, in one book. Um, and actually a little challenge, once you get really good, this is actually what I do now is, um, I'll go through the books and all the books, they say what the trick is, and then they say how to do it. So like, um, it'll say card to wallet effect in this trick, you get any card that they pick to go to your wallet. And then it'll say explanation and it'll teach how, what I like to do is I challenge myself. I look at the trick, but then I make my own method of how to do it. Right. So I don't look at the explanation part, but that'll take a while. Um, but yeah, books like just search that and then practice making your own stuff. 
That's great. And, and I love how you've added another, you know, pretty big lesson for everybody is be yourself, right? You saw that yeah. there were tutorials, but you know, it's kind of like, nah, these aren't fun. Like, you know, it's kind of, you know, you have your own personality and style and, uh, and that's what worked for you, which is great. Yeah. Um, a question on that, that I think a lot of people have and next week's class for everybody, uh, we're going to talk about the magic of social media kind of, you know, how did Evan become an entrepreneur, get 15 million followers and, uh, and counting, um, I want to ask, I think, you know, those of us who follow you on TikTok and go to your, your channel, there's new videos every day and they're generally pretty entertaining. And, you know, we learn things and all those. Um, how do you come up with, how do you stay creative? I think, you know, a lot of people here, whether they're, you know, want to be magicians or writers or actors or anything like that, you know, we've got a really creative crowd. How do you, you know, uh, how do you continue to create day after day? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it sounds cliche, but I think it's just um, excuse me. I think it's just um, having a passion for it. Sounds super cliche, but you know, you can apply it to anything. I mean, guys type in the chat, um, something you like to do for fun, like any hobby, whether it's art or a sport. Um, obviously the more you practice, the better you get. Right. So when I first started social media, it was interesting because I thought it was just, Oh, I just do my magic trick. And if it's good, maybe it'll get views, but you know, social media has its own like culture. Right. And I'll, I'll touch on it more next week. Um, when we talk about social media and entrepreneurship, but I think the key to that is just, I have the passion for doing magic and entertaining people. So with that, I kind of just force myself to make new stuff. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself today. I want to entertain people in a fresh way. Um, it's kind of like if you have a hobby and you have a huge passion for cooking, like you'll find new recipes, you'll find new things to do because you love it. Right. So I think as cliche as it, as it is, um, just having a passion for it kind of forces me to just do more and think more. I love that. Yeah. Find, find what you love to do and, uh, and it's not work. So, um, yeah. so that's great. And I uh, will talk about next week, some of the other social media stars. So we'll, we'll tease that one. Um, another one, I know Olivia just asked this and, uh, and several others, I think everybody wants to know, um, what was the hardest trick for you to learn? Um, and then, you know, I guess you showed us your favorite trick, but that's uh, so a two, two parter. What's the hardest yeah. trick you've ever, you had to learn and what's the one trick you still really want to learn? Ooh. Okay. Okay. The great question. So real quick about the favorite trick that I showed you guys and I showed you how to do it. That's like my favorite trick that is impromptu and in magic impromptu um, refers to just no setup required. You can just grab a deck of cards and do it. Most of my tricks are impromptu. Um, that's one of the reasons I call myself the card guy, like just hand me a deck of cards. I can do magic with it. Um, as opposed to having these expensive props um, that people can't inspect, like having a deck of cards and having someone hand it to you at their house or whatever, like, or at school and they hand it to you and they're like, Oh yeah, show, show me that trick. Show me. It's not a magic deck. And they're like, okay. And you, and you do it like that's So they're so impressed. So that's why that's my favorite trick. Cause you can do it at all times. Um, one that was probably the hardest to learn. Um, man, the hardest one for me to learn was probably how to get a card into my wallet. Um, I, I kind of referenced that a little bit earlier um, to get a card to your wallet. You, you have to do the steps I showed you. That's why the, that was the basics of magic, right? You, you remember their card with a key card or whatever, get it to the top, like I talked about. And then from there, you have to palm the card, which is basically you hide it in your hand. And it's not so much hard in theory, but it's hard to, to do without them noticing. Um, and that just takes misdirection and practice. Like I talked about eye contact when you need it, talk the way you need to in certain situations, but then you have to take that card. And when they're not looking, you have to distract them enough time that you can put this card in your pocket in your wallet without them noticing. Um, so that's probably the hardest. Um, it's literally just distraction. It's not magically teleporting, sorry. Um, I'm exposing myself a little bit. Um, but one that I'm still trying to practice is kind of a variation off my favorite trick where you take cards face up, face down, except the only difference is as I taught you guys, this isn't actually doing that. It's just an illusion. It makes it look like you're doing it. But I'm practicing a version where I hand them the deck. I tell them, turn half face up. And they literally do this and I fix it. Like, and it seems like I didn't even do anything. And that is just, I'm still practicing it. But basically the secret behind that is I just go through the cards and super quick, I just turn them over. Like as it looks like I'm just going through it. it it's crazy. I've been doing magic for nine years, still can't get it. But one day I will, and it'll be crazy because they'll, they'll shuffle the halves and it'll seem super impossible. So yeah, that, that's that. 
Perfect. That's well, I, I love it. I think that's another good message, Deborah. Right? We had a lot of people, uh, you know, you're doing tricks and talking about, we had a lot of people throwing out their hobbies, you know, there was art, painting, awesome. photography, and magic, and all those kind of things. And I think, um, you know, like you said, there's uh, there's always something to work on and improve on. So um, yeah. that's uh, that's something I, I don't know about everybody. I actually I do know everybody else. We're all going to be practicing, um, you know, tonight and, and, uh, and into the weekend. Um, so, uh, so let me leave one more question just because we yeah. had talked about it. I think it was really cool is, uh, you know, you know, you're, you were in their shoes not that long ago as a middle school kid, high school kid who was, you know, getting into it. Um, we talked about this one. You've, so you've been performing in Hollywood since you were 13. Um, yeah. Who's, uh, who's the most famous person you've ever done magic for? And, uh, and kind of how did, how did you deal with the, you know, the stress, intimidation? Um, you know, how do, uh, how, how do you, how do you deal with the fact that, uh, that you're young, like a lot of these kids, and yet you're performing for, you know, the rich, the famous and big crowds? Yeah, um, the most famous person I performed for was Will Ferrell. Um, it was crazy because I was only like 13. You know, they called me out, introducing Dr. Magic. <laughs> and I, I opened the curtains and, and I walked out and like I was into my presentation, right? Before I start the tricks, I'm like, hey, I'm Dr. Magic. The reason I'm called that is because I want to be a doctor. And I, I'm going through my whole spiel. And as I'm talking, I look and in the second row is Will Ferrell. And I'm like, oh, gosh because I had never encountered a famous person before um I think in that moment it's like when I realized you know what famous people are just people um you know and it's it was really really cool I mean don't get me wrong um but I just was like you know what like this is a really cool opportunity I'm gonna try to shine my best I'm, I'm gonna try to do my best um and I can tell he was enjoying it every so often as I look out into the crowd I like purposely make eye contact with him like I thought it was just super cool. Um, and then fun fact, after the show, the, the hostess of the castle, who like kind of organizes everything, gets everyone in their seats, ready to see the show on time. Um, she goes, Evan, how was the performance? I'm like, oh, it was, it was good. It was really good. She's like, yeah, that was a private show for Will Ferrell and his family. I didn't want to tell you because I thought it would make you nervous. <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe it would have been nice to know, but it was, it was definitely fun. Perfect. That's, uh, I thought that was so cool. And we were talking about that. I guess we can say backstage on this, right? So um, that's uh, yeah, cool story. And again, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of the mission here to kind of help people follow their passions and everything is once you break it down, everybody's just people. And, you know, no matter how famous somebody is, they want to be delighted by magic tricks. And so I think the same goes here is, uh, you know, even though Evan's got, you know, 15 million followers and counting um, pretty, pretty down to earth guy. If you see him on the street, ask right. him to show you a coin or a card trick, right? What's the, uh, the tagline I love in your videos is, you know, you got 15 seconds, show me a trick. Yep, so, yep. Um, yeah. So feel free to ask them. So Evan, Hey, thanks a ton. Um, we, uh, we've got next week's class, um, same time, same place. And Evan's going to talk all about kind of how he built his magic empire on social media. And so anybody who, who wants to be creative, be an entrepreneur, kind of build their own business, he's going to talk through how he did it and, and teach you guys some lessons for all those kind of things. So uh, we've got that to look forward to. And there may be a magic trick or two in there as well. Something we haven't quite seen yet. Maybe that one, that, uh, that you're trying to learn where, uh, you know, you flip maybe. them back and forth, or maybe you'll spit a frog into a bowl for us, right? Oh, so, I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> so you've got a week. You've got a week. So the, the clock is counting. So um, thanks, everybody, for joining us for all your great questions. If we didn't get to you, we'll get to it next week. And if your question was just, whoa, how did he do that? Well, you've got a week to practice that as well. Um, remember, um, tag Varsity Tutors and The Card Guy on Instagram with those pictures, and you'll be entered to win an autographed deck of cards and the, uh, the trick pen that it came with. Um, um, Evan, thanks a ton. This was a whole lot of fun and uh, we look Thank forward you. to seeing you next week. Super fun. All right. Thanks. Thank you.